This is Matt Frigi. Thank you for joining us. Hundreds of people registered for this webcast. I, I glanced th through the list and counted, I think, 10 countries represented. And that's just the ones I could tell from the email address domains. There might be more .coms that are in other countries. In any case, we have a lot of people from many different fields of expertise. This webcast, even more than usual, we have quite a diverse group of professionals, some with federal, state, or local U.S. government agencies, several from health departments in other countries. We have engineers, water treaters, industrial hygienists, consultants. We have facilities and property management personnel for many different building types. Some insurance companies too, I saw. I think there might be an attorney. Welcome to all of you. Happy New Year to you. I hope and pray the, the very, very best for you in 2017. Good health and prosperity in, in all respects. Most of our webcasts, as you know, if you've participated in them before, are on how-to topics. Two, for example, recently were on, one was on how to minimize stagnation of plumbing systems, and another on how to interpret Legionella test results. This webcast is different. The objective really is to start a conversation, not to teach something. And that conversation will hopefully lead to real breakthrough in Legionella prevention. I'm simply going to outline what I believe are problems, some problems regarding Legionella prevention, particularly in the United States, discuss some possible solutions, and then ask for your input. And you can comment, as I mentioned, below the article on the website. Hopefully a lot of you will comment. The more of you who do, the more likely we'll come up with some good ideas. Any of you familiar with Legionnaire's disease would probably agree that nearly all cases of it will be prevented by minimizing Legionella in domestic water systems, cooling towers, whirlpool spas, and decorative fountains. So ideally then, all facilities will implement effective control measures without spending more money than necessary. We don't want to burden them any more than necessary to implement those measures. So the ideal outcome is maximal prevention at minimal costs. The reality, though, is that the number implementing Legionella water management plans programs has increased several fold, I think, since ASHRAE 188 was finalized. The percentage is still low. So why is that? I think in part is that there is still really low awareness. Many building operators still think, for example, that Legionella is a problem only in cooling towers. They really don't even know, they haven't heard, that domestic water systems, plumbing systems, uh, decorative fountains and whirlpool spas need to be managed as well. Some are unaware of the benefits. A lot of you pointed that out, in fact, in comments you mentioned in the article that, that you find that building operators don't understand the benefits of doing that to their organization and the consequences for not doing so as well. And some, believe it or not, haven't even heard of ASHRAE 188, but many are aware. And those that are aware, I think most of them really care. I mean, they really care about protecting the people in their buildings. They want to reduce legal risk for their organizations. They want to be good corporate citizens. But they only have a limited amount of time and money and personnel to implement a plan. I think a lot of the facilities directors, infection control people at hospitals, and in other facilities too, even to some extent, maybe out of fear for their own jobs and being sued individually, as happens sometimes. They want to implement these plans, but they can't get budgets approved for them. Similarly, with health departments, there's unawareness too. You might be surprised to hear that, but many health departments, most health, health departments look to the CDC for guidance, but many of them are still they're not up to speed with CDC recommendations. Their views are based on 1990s CDC publications. True story, less than six months ago, a major county health department told a group of hospitals that I was working with that they didn't need to implement a water management plan. And these hospitals already were doing so. The, the county health department said, you don't need to do that. You can stop doing that. You can stop testing for Legionella. They even discouraged it. Um, I, I was very surprised. And granted, I might not be getting completely accurate information that was from the hospital, but still that was what the hospital understood the health department was saying to them. I remember one of you, I think it was Terry Lopeman, commented on the article on the website, you're finding in your company the same thing, health departments telling facilities they don't need to bother with water management plans. So awareness is low among some health departments, but I think most of them, most health departments are aware of ASHRAE 188. They do believe that building operators should manage water systems in compliance with ASHRAE 188. And so they're feeling pressure too, because they have some responsibility or feel responsibility 
for making sure building operators comply. Well, how did we get here? After the 1976 outbreak in Philadelphia that led to the discovery of Legionnaire's disease, tremendous amounts of research uh, was performed to find out why water systems promote growth of Legionella bacteria and how bacteria are transferred to people's lungs. Many, many papers, well over 100 scientific papers were published. And those papers, in fact, those findings are what many of our control measures now that are, you see in guidelines are based on. We owe a lot to the people who worked very hard to do those to do those studies. Some of them are still active today. In fact, I see three names on here I exchanged uh, emails with just this week. So we have a lot of information. And then in the 1990s, these findings were condensed into action steps that facility operators could take to reduce the risk of disease. In Australia, or at least some Australian states, and in the UK, action steps were mandated by law as early as 1991. But in the US, government and industry groups, rather than adopting regulations, simply urged building operators to manage water systems, plumbing systems, cooling towers, whirlpool spas, decorative fountains, to minimize the risk of Legionella, hoping they would voluntarily to protect the people who spend time in their buildings. OSHA, for example, in their 1996 technical document said the likelihood of contracting Legionnaire's disease is related to the level of contamination in the water source. An appropriate strategy is to minimize the number of organisms present. And then ASHRAE, long before 188, issued a position statement in 1998 that said design, operate, maintain water systems to minimize Legionella. And then in 2000, issued guideline 12 to tell building operators how to do that. The EPA said in 1999 in a document, because no vaccine is available, prevention needs to happen by breaking the chain of transmission. The World Health Organization in, in 2007, control measures have been effective in preventing further cases. Fundamentally, then, the responsibility for managing the risk of legionellosis belongs to the facility owner or manager. The CDC, too, has been proactive in its recommendations for Legionella long before most people realize, even as early as 2002, it issued these publications. CDC recommends a strategy based on proper maintenance of water systems, Rich Besser said in 2002. Barry Fields, while opinions differ about sampling, there is agreement that all healthcare facilities should have a control strategy in place. And in their infection control document in 2003, CDC recommends aggressive disinfection measures for cleaning and maintaining devices known to transmit Legionella. And they even referenced ASHRAE guideline 12 saying that adoption of it, compliance with it, could dramatically reduce risk of transmission. So then with all these guidelines, with all these warnings as far back as 1990s up until 2015, why then was the June 2015 release of ASHRAE 188 so significant? Well, one reason, besides it being an ANSI regulation-ready standard, is that with ASHRAE 188, there is now agreement not only about the need for Legionella prevention in building water systems, but also about the approach to it, and that is to implement a water management plan having the same essential elements, basically, that was outlined by the World Health Organization in, 20, in 2007 and by the VHA in 2014 in Directive 1061. And ASHRAE 188 has received a tremendous amount of attention and support since its release, far more than any other government or industry document released in the United States to date. Not long after, just a few days after the release of 188, there was the major outbreak in New York City that caused multiple deaths and, and affected many people. And then uh, just a, within a couple of months after that, the city issued and the state emergency regulations for cooling towers, which was basically to comply with ASHRAE 188 with respect to cooling towers. And then last year, New York City updated the regulations and made them permanent, and New York State did as well, not only for cooling towers, but in New York State, regulations also cover plumbing systems in hospitals and nursing homes. In June of last year, the CDC issued three publications that were very significant, em emphasizing the need to comply with ASHRAE 188 and CDC's support for that. In the MMWR article, Deficiencies in Environmental Control Identified in 
in OPRIX 2000 to 2014, it talked about the fourfold rise in Legionnaires cases in the last 15 years and said Legionella grows best in building water systems that are not well maintained. And the key to preventing outbreaks is good management of building water systems according to new industry standards, those new industry standards meaning ASHRAE 188. Well, the mainstream media caught that in, uh, immediately. The Washington Post published a story, Legionnaires outbreaks, cases nearly quadrupled in 15 years. The Wall Street Journal, almost all outbreaks are preventable with improvements in water systems management. USA Today, most outbreaks can be prevented through better water management according to the CDC report. And then the CDC clarified its expectations in its vital signs document. It said nine and 10 outbreaks it investigated were caused by problems preventable with more effective water management. It told very clearly building owners and managers should develop and use a Legionella water management program, said state and local officials should consider changing building and public health codes to include Legionella water management program. Sounds a lot like regulations. The CDC went a step further and basically told facilities how to, said uh, to help facilities, this document, this toolkit they called it, to develop and implement a water management program to reduce your building's risk for growing and spreading Legionella. Now, look carefully at this last sentence because it's, it's, it's really, really an important sentence, sentence. In this document, the CDC said, Legionella water management programs are now an industry standard for large buildings in the United States. Having served as an expert in 60-some lawsuits related to Legionella, I know that is a very, very significant statement because it, it establishes very clearly at least in the CDC's view, what standard of care is in connection with Legionnaires litigation. Even though the CDC, I'm sure, didn't mean it as a legal statement, it's almost certain to be used that way. The lawyers seem to agree, too. They wrote this, uh, too, wrote this article in this legal publication and said compliance with the new ASHRAE standard likely will be viewed by courts as the standard of care in personal injury lawsuits involving exposure to Legionella. BOMA, too, the Association for Building Owners and Managers, published an announcement, it's still on BOMA.org, saying the CDC asks building owners and managers to adopt newly published standards that promote Legionella water management. So their own industry association has clarified those expectations. So all of this then amounts to pressure. It puts pressure on building operators to comply with ASHRAE 188, not only to reduce their legal risk, but because of potentially significant damage to their image if they don't comply with such widely agreed upon and supported recommendations if a case of Legionnaire's disease is associated with their facility. And health departments, I think, are facing some pressure too to make sure that they do comply. So uh, what can be done? What can be done to relieve pressure without neglecting the goal to drastically reduce Legionnaire's disease? And we'll look at three groups of people, service providers, building owners and managers, and health departments. Well, service providers are needed. Facilities want help with setting up a water management plan. When I first was working on our LAMPS water management plan cloud application, I figured facilities would want to use it to set up a plan on their own because they could do it so much less expensively. And some are doing that, but most want our water management plan partners, the water treatment companies and industrial hygiene firms, to do it for them because it saves them so much time and it, it gets done so much quicker because these companies, some of them have a lot of experience doing it. So, so facilities want that help and they need help in the implementation and the documentation of the plan. For sure, they need help with sampling to validate their plan. Of course, then they need a laboratory to analyze those samples. They definitely need help with remediation, with the recommendations of what to do, as well as the products and the equipment and the services to implement those solutions. So the companies providing these services mostly are water treatment companies. I think they're handling the lion's share of it. Some industrial hygiene firms, uh, less so engineering firms, but, but to some extent engineering firms. The laboratories are needed, of course, to analyze the 
water samples for Legionella. Some Legionella specialists are involved, but uh, we're a rare breed. There just aren't too many. And then um, actually equipment manufacturers are involved too, not just in supplying equipment, but some of them anyway, in doing the site surveys and setting up water management plans, they want to offer full solutions. And, and so they're involved with that. So what's needed, as I pointed out in the article, for the service providers is education. And so many of you agreed with that. So many of the comments we had of in the article are, are talking about education needed. And that's not just for building operators. They're not the only ones who need education. It's the service providers too. For one thing, to increase the number of companies that are offering the services that feel confident to offer them. Because a lot of companies, and I respect them for this, they don't want to offer services they really don't know enough about. They want the expertise, and that's the right way to, to handle it. So we need more education so that they know how to do, for example, site surveys and set up water management plans. Some, unfortunately, are providing services without having been properly educated, and that's a problem, too, because they're making bad recommendations. Frankly, that's just what's happening in a lot of cases. They're recommending solutions for example, remediation solutions that are sometimes five times, 10 times as expensive as what they need to be. And it's not because they're dishonest. It's not because they're trying to sell equipment. In fact, some of them aren't even in that role. They don't even sell equipment. They just offer solutions. They just don't know better. They don't know what the other options are. So that's a huge problem. It, it's a huge cost factor for facilities. And then education is needed too, just to include efficiency, especially in site surveys and configuring water management plans. Some companies charge a lot of money because they have to. It takes them a lot of time and they need better efficiency to do it faster so it doesn't cost as much money for the facilities. What about building owners and managers? I would suggest take another look at your water management practices. Don't just assume that everything you're believing about water management plans or you've been told about water management plans is true. I liked what Dr. Clarissa Lucas of the CDC wrote in the comments of the article. She pointed out that water management plans do not have to be overly burdensome. She said the risk management approach to prevention such as ASHRAE 188 that we at CDC promote should not be expensive or difficult, but should be a normal component of operations, positively contributing to the overall maintenance program. We believe that most people can do a lot of good with very little effort. Very well said. And then I liked what Bill Gaines said, the advice he gave. Bill Gaines of Ford just said this, just get started. Now, this is coming from somebody who has years of experience in plant operations. He said, after all of his experience, just get started. And a good way to get started, if you haven't seen this already, because there is a link to it in, in the article, is this building's magazine article. I wrote the article. It was in this month's issue. just came out, I think, last week. Six questions to test your water management preparedness. Take a look at that. Go through those six questions. That's a good starting point to determine how you are doing. What about for health departments? What are the options for health departments? How can they help? Well, let's look at three options. One is no regulations, another detailed regulations, and principle-based regulations. And let's consider these based on prevention, how effective will they be in preventing Legionnaires' disease? What is the cost to governments and, and the cost to the facilities? The question for no regulations is, will the percentage of facilities implementing an effective Legionella water management plan rise to a high level without regulations? And as I mentioned before, the number of facilities, based on what I can tell, based on what I'm seeing, has increased several fold since ASHRAE 188 was finalized, the number I mean that are implementing good water management plans, but the percentage is still low. Uh, perhaps other facilities will do it eventually simply out of concern for the people in their buildings and for their legal risk. Insurance companies might have an impact if they begin, or they will have an impact if they begin requiring Legionella water management plans and facilities they insure for liability. You can see in the comments of the article comments that Russ Nassoff yesterday, an attorney and a, a consultant to the insurance industry, commented that some insurance companies are already doing this. And I didn't realize that, but some act apparently are, are already requiring water management plans. He's the one who would certainly know. But otherwise, without insurance, requirements and without some form of regulation, there's really no reason based on past performance to expect the percentage of facilities having good water management plans implementing those to rise significantly. Most of them are going to need a nudge. 
So one option for that would be detailed regulations. What about this then? For detailed regulations, the cost of them, among all the options, the cost is by far highest. It's, it's high cost for governments to develop and enforce the regulations. There is a lengthy development period typically. And what I'm talking about by detailed regulations are regulations that outline specific Legionella control measures rather than outcome-based rules. So I understand when you, you, you might say, well, a lengthy development period, New York City and New York State adopted regulations very quickly. And kudos to them for that. They did do it with impressive speed. But it was just for cooling towers. And setting detailed regulations that make sense for all domestic water systems would be far more complex. Now, the New York State rules do cover plumbing systems for hospitals and nursing homes, but those aren't detailed regulations with respect to the plumbing systems. Those really are principle-based regulations that say you need to have a plan and you need to sample. Now, they do give specific criteria for interpreting Legionella test results, but not detailed procedures for managing plumbing systems. And I'm not saying that in a critical way. I actually think that was the smart way for them to do it. But I'm just saying if detailed regulations are attempted for plumbing systems, it would take a tremendous amount of time to get those in place. So they're also the costliest option for facilities because they not only have the cost of implementing the control measures, but all of the forms and the details and the inspections that are involved with complying with regulations. And that's just an extra burden that we really don't need for facilities, the facilities only. But here is a really important consideration, I think, and that is what about owners that have buildings in several states, a large hotel chain, for example, or a property management company that's responsible for properties in multiple states? Detailed regulations in each individual state would be an absolute nightmare for them. They simply would not be able to handle it. For one thing, they wouldn't be able to have consistency among their properties. Their water management plans for each of these properties, or at least ones in different states, would be different. That's not good. It's not efficient. It would be so difficult to have all those different sets of rules to comply with that it really wouldn't get done. It would not get done well. What about principle-based regulations? Instead of adopting regulations requiring a long list of water management procedures and then inspecting properties or inspecting documentation to check compliance, health departments could simply establish principle-based regulations for Legionella water management programs. Principle-based regulations re require an outcome be reached or an objective accomplished, but they don't dictate the methods or the pathway to reach that objective, to accomplish it. Let me just say right now, I, I don't claim to be an expert on regulations at all. I'm just passing on some information, some of these ideas to discuss. I did read about it a little bit, though, some of the studies of, the, of detailed regulations versus principle-based regulations and found them really interesting. You can read about some of that in the, in the article on the website. But in short, studies have shown that at least in some applications, detailed rules resulted in worse outcomes, not better. One in particular was the nursing homes in Australia that had principle-based regulations versus the detailed regulations for nursing homes in the United States. And the study showed that managers and staff members in the Australian nursing homes used their intelligence and their creativity to find optimum solutions to reach the regulated outcomes for their organization. They did a better job, whereas the ones in the US were so focused on trying to meet the rules that they were focused on checking boxes and they just didn't do as good of a job. So principle-based regulations might work for water management too. For example, one simple sentence, the regulation really could boil down to this one sentence, develop, implement, and register a water management plan that satisfies ASHRAE 188 period. Maybe there would be an online portal. In fact, I would suggest to make it easy for the governments and really easier for the facilities as well. Use some kind of online portal to gather and track the information. Here's this figure on the screen that is an example of what it might look like. I mean, there could be a number of variations, but I think it would be good to get an inventory of what they actually have, make sure they are inventorying at least these five types of water systems. I realize there are other ones that need to be considered, but these I think are the five most important ones. How many of these systems do you have on your property? How many control measures do you have for each one? 
each system type, and then how are you validating them? You could ask some specific questions that would give you, and I'm saying you meaning the health department or the, the governing authority, an idea of how they're doing with their plan. Yes, no questions. You could add additional ones too, maybe about their shutdown and startup procedures for their cooling towers. Are those consistent with ASHRAE guidelines? They answer yes or no. They describe why they think their validation methods are effective. You could employ some kind of a simple algorithm to flag answers that would be of a concern. It might, might mean you would need to follow up with those facilities and get more information. Then they simply upload their water management plan in a PDF. They upload their documentation for the last 12 months. Compared to detailed regulations anyway, it would be far easier for government entities to establish these and to enforce them. And think about this too, the burden of updating. You wouldn't have to, as a, as a health department or government agent, you wouldn't have to update your Legionella control measures because you, you don't have those in your regulation. Your regulation just says comply with ASHRAE 188 and show us that you have. So the burden of updating is on ASHRAE to keep 188 updated, which they've already committed to doing. I think they call it a living document, but I don't remember the term, but they, it's in constant mode of updating. And it's easier for the facilities too, especially, as I mentioned, the ones with properties in multiple states. It would be so much simpler if every state had just this principle-based regulation to comply with ASHRAE 188. It would give them the opportunity to be consistent among all their properties. So something to consider in deciding for no regulations or detailed regulations versus principle-based regulations, and let's say for water management plan registration as an example of that, is the likely impact on various groups of facility owners and managers. Now, I haven't conducted a survey to find out the percentage of facilities implementing effective water management plans per ASHRAE 188, but I do receive quite a bit of feedback directly from facilities to some extent, but then also through our water management plan partners, really hundreds of facilities in addition through them, I get feedback for. So from what I can tell, there are basically three groups. The first one we would call the already ours. They are already implementing a water management program, a good one too, and these are the organizations they have valuable brands, they have good reputations, they do everything else well. They take good care of their buildings, they produce excellent products and services, they pay their employees well and provide a good work environment. They don't need regulations. They're already doing what we, we meaning the public, want them to do. They're implementing effective water management plans. At the other end of the spectrum are the never wills. These are the facilities that won't implement a good water management plan, even if it's required by law. Whether it's required by principle-based regulations or detailed regulations, they're going to find a way to cheat. They're going to comply only enough to get through inspections. They might even be okay with paying fines from time to time. Regulations, why spend money on regulations that's not really going to help them? It might move the needle a little with that group but not that much. It's not worth doing for that group. Like I said, I haven't done a survey. I don't know what the percentages are, but my best guess is that right now today, this group might be about 5%. Of all the facilities that should have water management plans, about 5% are in the green group. I think at most 5% are in the red group. I hope it's a lot less than that. I hope it's one or 2%, but I don't think it's more than five by any means. So let's say it's even five and it's 5% for the green group. That would leave 90% in the middle. This is our target group. These are the facilities that really they want to do the right thing. They just need to convince their managers to approve money to do it. They, they just need a nudge. They need a nudge from the outside, and that's going to work whether it's insurance requirements or principle-based regulations or detailed regulations. They'll probably all be sufficient to give them the nudge to get the budgeting for water management plans. And this group, I believe, they'll do it well. Once they decide to do it, once they get the approval to do it, they're going to do a good job with their water management plans. They don't need detailed regulations to tell them every little jot and tittle. They just need a nudge to get them started. Something else to consider is what are the likely outcomes for the amount of prevention for the cost, the cost of the facilities, the cost of the governments. So consider these two questions. I'm actually going to take a poll in the next slide, and you'll get to vote on these three. But before you vote, consider this with respect to detailed regulations versus 
water management plan registration. Now, if detailed regulations are more preventive, and that's a big if, again, based on the Australian outcomes for nursing homes, you could argue you'll actually get better prevention from just a principle-based water management plan registration. But let's say detailed regulations are actually more preventive, then the difference would be C minus B, right? We haven't put numbers in these, but just work with me here. So the increased prevention from detailed regulations would be C minus B. So is that additional prevention worth the cost, which would be F minus E? So then compare, using the same logic, compare no regulations with water management plan registration. Would the increase in prevention from water management plan justify the cost, E minus D? And that's really what it boils down to. So I'm going to open up this poll. This is really surprising. Nobody so far has voted for no regulations. We have 76% principle-based regulations and 24% detailed regulations. Oh, we just got one. <laughs> 1 1% no regulations. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and close that off. To wrap it up then, before we get into the Q&A and the comments, for further discussion, I, th I think we can agree on three points as a foundation. One is that nearly all cases of Legionnaire's disease will be prevented by minimizing Legionella and domestic water systems, cooling towers, whirlpool spas, and decorative fountains. The, I the ideal outcome is to get high prevention at low cost. We don't want to spend more money on it than necessary to get the prevention. And then Although building owners have ultimate responsibility for Legionella prevention in their water systems, service providers and health departments play an important role as well in, in maximizing prevention and minimizing costs. Um, let's wrap it up. I hope this webcast has been helpful to you. I appreciate your time and attention. Please go back and look at the article. If you're watching this after the live webcast, please leave a comment below the video, all the way down at the bottom, below the article. We would love to have your feedback. Thank you. God bless you. I'll see you next time.